Hey, friends out there, this is Thursday, June 8th, 2023, and it is just about 531 in the morning here in Northern California, and as usual, I'll talk about a few different things today. I hope everybody's doing as well as they can in a crazy-ass world run by maniacal, money-loving madmen bent on misery for masses. Yes, my friends. One of the things I really feel compelled to do is point out to people what a load of BS the so-called reality that's handed to us from birth really is. And that it's very important that you choose your own reality. And you choose that with no human being, but you choose that with the Creator the God Almighty with your owner. And uh, that way you can be sure you've got the right reality. Because reality has a lot to do with beliefs, the things we trust in, the things we have faith in, and our values, the things we value most and that we value somewhat, and that we value of very little. And I submit to you that the values that the vast majority of people have in this world, if they're worldly-minded people, those values are erroneous, and they're not going to lead to genuine happiness. You see, it's critical that in our effort to attain happiness, now I'm talking about true happiness, I'm talking about genuine happiness, that we don't stray on that path and that we don't inadvertently, unintentionally, accidentally value the wrong things. And that's really easy to do in a world that vaunts Riches and fame, fame and fortune, stuff. It's really perverted. It's really sick and twisted. That's the reality. That's the truth. The way our parents, that's our divine parents, that's the creator God Almighty, that's our owner, looks at things is critical. We've got to ask, just ask, simply ask to be able to see through God's point of view and you'll see how dramatically and profoundly different things really look. And the things that are most valuable are things like you and I, human beings, that's at the very top of God's list of valuable things on this planet. The souls of men. We're what it's all about. We are the most important creature on the face of the earth. We are godlike creatures with virtually unlimited potential to create, to co create. Our imagination is virtually unlimited, and anything we've ever been able to imagine, we've also been able to make manifest. And everything that we have manifested on planet Earth over the millennia, thousands of year periods, it's accumulated. The infrastructure and all the technology, everything we have, think about it, all the stuff we have, all of it is from God because God gave us the wherewithal. He gave us the brain, the imagination, and it's, uh, it's all about honoring our parents. This is where we will find true happiness, is pleasing our parents, pleasing our parents. It's the only answer, individually and collectively. And uh, we're at a, uh, a crossroads, a turning point here for our species, our race, the civilization. 
And we're going to decide, each one of us individually, but also collectively, which path we are going to go down. Are we going to decide to adopt the opinion of our owner? Or are we going to adopt the opinion of the rulers of this world, this evil world, run by evil men? That's why it's evil. And that has everything to do with money. Money is master in this world. It's really a satanic precept. We really have got to see it for what it is. It's a big deal. It's not a joke. It's not something that we could take lightly. It's a big deal how we look at money. If you want to know God's opinion on money, I strongly suggest you read the scriptures and you'll find out that it's seen as a false competing God. It competes for our affection and our attention. And it's very successful in getting it, isn't it? Very successful. So the pushers of this product, this entity we call money, so innocuously, it's just money. I, I use it as a tool. I mean, you know, nothing's free, right? We hear these terms bandied about. And, of course, you've got a cost of living, you know, as if somebody gave us life, some human being. Well, if any human being gave us life, it would be our parents. And what cost of living would our parents charge us? You understand? But it wasn't our parents. Our parents did very little. They did what came instinctively. They made it. That's how we came to be. But God did the miracle, the heavy lifting, the creation. That's the big deal we don't know how to do. People talk about atheism and all this and how everything just is just a fluke. It's just a big happenstance. Just a series of coincidences that life exists and this whole male-female paradigm that's replete throughout creation. That's all just, that. It's, no, it's just the natural laws, you know, it just, you know, like uh, Darwin said or something, right? You know, no, that just, it's evolution. You give, you know, give things billions and billions of years and, you know, that's what happens. It's absurd. The scientists, I don't care who they are, state of the art, everything, technology they have, they cannot reproduce a sperm from scratch without using some human DNA. And they can't do it with ovum either, right? Ova, whatever. And uh, so they can't do it. So, But I'm to believe that it all happened by itself. You understand? So first establish in your own mind and heart that there is a God. And ask yourself, what does this God want from me? Well, God wants to be acknowledged. That's, a, that's one of the biggest problems with agnosticism or atheism or just being indifferent. I don't care. Maybe yes, maybe no, and we'll find out when I die, you know, all this crap. It's like, no, God wants to be honored. God wants to be acknowledged. God wants to be thanked. I mean, do you value life? Do you appreciate existing? Do you like, enjoy your five senses? Are you glad? Are you grateful? Are you thankful for all the good things you've ever experienced from when you first remember as a little kid? All those memories, those fond, pleasant memories you have. And growing up as a teenager in your 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s and so on. And all the things you could look forward to that you don't know. The good things that are in store for you. The people you're going to meet. These are the, the gifts from God. is human beings meeting people. And an opportunity to fellowship with people. And to share ideas and to grow. King Solomon said, you know, it's, well, for believers it's like metal sharpening metal. When you have fellowship with somebody, that you grow, you expand, you bounce ideas around, and you share, and that's what it's all about. You grow, you evolve as a human being, as a soul. So it's a great gift to just have fellowship. And remind each other that we're precious, you know, we're, each one of us is a precious treasure to God. We're it. On planet Earth, we're it. And it's probably the same all through, throughout the universe. 
not just the, our Milky Way galaxy, which it's estimated according to Drake's equation that there's some over 500 million. I mean, wrap your mind around that. A million, you know, you won't even live a million hours if you live to be 100. It's like 876,000 and change. But 500 million habitable planets in our galaxy alone. And am I to believe that it's not possible that there's higher intelligence out there? Life very similar to ours, flora and fauna very similar to ours, just with a different history and other variables that make it unique and individual. I believe there is. I think it's it's incredible. I mean, the stuff we can ponder is just absolutely awesome. And there's no time for boredom. But we get into this humdrum attitude because of the world we're subjected to by our owners. We're trained, we're conditioned, programmed, indoctrinated, brainwashed into just fitting a mold that they want so we can stay malleable and under control, conforming and compliant to their whims because, you know, they're the masters because, you know, they're the controllers. They control the money supply. They're the leaders, the rulers, these grand uppermost politicians at the uppermost echelons of power in this world, controlling the purse strings. These are the grand puppeteers that also control the puppet strings. You understand how this works?